Today we're going to look again at the media player we designed some time ago, which was done on a standard ITX board. Now this is quite a compact machine with two cooling fans, an intake and an outtake fan, a passively cooled motherboard, an mSATA SSD and a Pico power supply. Now at the time we created this, this was as small as we could actually make this machine. However, we're going to go one better today. We're going to redesign it with a smaller motherboard. We're going to build one of these around an Odroid board. Since the ITX motherboard is 17 by 17 centimeters and the Odroid is 11 by 11, we can build this in a smaller case. And we're going to build this again using maker beam struts, using the black anodized 15 cm and 6 cm struts, connecting them together using the black corner cubes. And these are going to be connected together by these small black maker beam aluminium cubes. So the first thing to do is to mount the board. The board will be fastened onto two 15 cm struts using standoffs, which are then screwed into M3 bolts, which slide into the grooves of each strut. This allows the board to be easily positioned and slid either forward or back. So we're using these standard standoffs to actually mount the board. And once we've got these established, we just want the end of the board sticking slightly out as what's going to be mounted around this are these. Like so. And that will be the full size of our unit. So we we'll want this to overhang slightly. So we we'll want this to go to about here. That'll about do. So we'll just tighten these up. And the same on this side. While it can be easier to purchase a ready-made case into which your board can be mounted, using a system like MakerBeam means you're not constrained by the dimensions and capacities of a specific case. If during your design work you decide that the case needs to be bigger or smaller in any dimension, you merely need to dismantle what you've already built. This makes for much easier prototyping. Right, now that we have that firmly bolted into place, we can start to build the infrastructure around it. Now, we'll want a unit at the front here, which will form the periphery of our case, and the rest of our case will be built around it like this. Now, we'll need L brackets on each of these to hold these in place, so we'll put the L brackets in first. Two at each end. Now, I want to leave some room at one side in order to put a power switch in and anything else we need in the way of cabling. So I will offset this slightly. And we'll put the bolts in on this side. Like so. And two bolts on this side too. There are a variety of brackets that can be used with MakerBeam to connect the struts together to allow you to use whatever fits your design best. Now that 
all the bolts in place. We'll just tighten them up. Like so. Now we'll put on the uh, end cubes. This will allow us to start putting the end parts of the frame together now. The corner cubes provide an easy way to connect the struts together without having to use brackets, as at the end of each of the struts there is a pre-drilled and threaded hole. And it's starting to take shape. Now, before we go any further, I we'll want to put these L brackets in here before we screw that down. Four more bolts in here to anchor the other side. Once sufficient brackets are in place, the structure itself becomes quite rigid. And these can now be tightened up. And the same to be done on the other side. Right, that's mostly that side done. We can now place the, uh, the last side in place. There we have it, the base is now complete. Now we can start looking at the uprights. Now positioning these uprights like so will give us enough space to put in our fans. For example, we can bolt the fan in here onto either the top or the bottom and give us plenty of space. So we'll just put these uprights in place to get an idea of how big the case is going to be. As you've seen, each of the maker beam struts has actually got a hole drilled in the centre which is threaded, which allows you to bolt things together using these corner cubes, which makes construction really very straightforward. Now for this particular unit, we're having the I.O. ports at the back and at the front we will mount a power switch in this section here and a grill covering each of the four sides and we'll have a grill on the base as well. The lid on the top will be acrylic connected to the frame using a magnetic strip. This magnetic strip approach I used in the last media player computer to allow the top of the case to be fitted without any bolts being visible. Now 
now that the four corner cubes have actually attached, we can now start to put the top struts in place. So again, we we'll use these small screws for attaching to the corner cubes, which saves us having to use any brackets. The advantage of this is that it will leave the grooves in the aluminium struts completely free. And then into this, we will slide our polypropylene drill, which will be perforated and sprayed with black plasti dip to match the rest of the case. We could have made the height of the case smaller, but this extra couple of centimetres will give enough room for air circulation to ensure that the unit stays cool. And then our final strut is in place, so our case is now structurally complete. On the base of unit, we will have another polypropylene sheet, spray painted black, which will be bolted to the corners. And on the base of that, we can put nice rubber feet that will make it sit quite nicely. So this will be an even smaller computer than the last media player. So the remaining work needing done is we will need to put in a grill in the front here and in this grill we will cut a hole for our power switch will be the standard odroid 3.3 volt power switch we can then mount a fan to have an intake at the front for example here and we'll also allow us to do an extractor fan somewhere at the back But that's it for today. Thank you for watching.